Welcome to this video. So in this video, we'll be talking about the chain rule. So what is the chain rule? So to kind of introduce the idea of the chain rule, let's talk about the composition of two functions. So suppose I tell you, for, for instance, that f of x is equal to the square root of x. And suppose I tell you that g of x is equal to the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay. Oh, sorry, not, yeah. So that would mean that f of g of x is equal to the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, now how would I take the derivative of this function? I can't really use the product rule because it's not a product of the terms. I can't use the quotient rule. And I can't release the power rule because there's something inside the square root. So this kind of brings me to my next point. How do I take the, how do I take the derivative of a composition of two functions? That seems a bit unusual. Well, this introduces the idea of the chain rule. So what is the chain rule? So the chain rule is says that if I have y equals f o g so if i have a composition of two functions and by the way the order and mean if it was g o f the rule would still be the same regardless it would just be in terms of different variables but nevertheless so suppose i have a, fu a function which is a composition of two functions so that means f o g would be equal to f of g of x okay so the chain rule says that y prime is equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x now this might seem very very confusing at first so let's just kind of talk about what do i mean by this so this one says i take the derivative of the outside i leave the inside alone and then i multiply this whole thing by the derivative of the inside so i will do an example where i take a derivative of this function at the very end of this video but I will be doing the majority of my examples using the chain rule in the next video. So this thing right there is called the chain rule. Okay, now how do we know that this is true? Well, let's go ahead and do a proof of the chain rule really quickly right here. So suppose I have y equals f of g of x. Okay, that means dy over dx, or, you know, the derivative, is equal to the limit as each approaches 0 of f of uh, h of x minus f of x all over h. And that just comes from the definition of the derivative. So now if we go ahead and do a substitution, we get the limit as each approaches 0 of f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x and then we're going to divide all of this by h okay now the next part i'm going to do is a little bit weird and it might seem a bit strange at first but i promise that the the ideas will work out so we get a little bit as h goes to zero of the exact same thing in fact i'm actually going to copy paste what i just had before so let me just go ahead and uh, do that. Uh, there we go. And okay, so this is just the what I had before. Let me just go ahead and move it a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to multiply this resultant by a term. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by g of x plus h minus g of x over g of x plus h minus g of x okay this might seem a bit unusual at first but again i promise that this will work out so if we go ahead and do the limit out at this point now we get the limit as h goes to zero of f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x and then we could divide all of this by okay so we just put this properly okay so you're going to divide all of this by g of x plus h minus g of x times g of x plus h minus g of x all over h so at this point i just kind of swapped the denominators around 
Now, if you take a very good look at the second part, that's just the definition of derivative. So if I go ahead and use my limit loss, so I did, technically these should probably be in brackets. So it should probably be looking like this. Okay, now if I use my limit laws, we can rewrite this as the limit as h approaches zero of f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x all over g of x plus h minus g of x. At that, we're going to multiply this by the limit as h goes to zero of g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. But this right here is the definition of derivative for some function g. So that's just g prime of x. Good, we're already done 50% of the chain rule proof. So if you go ahead and rewrite this, we get the same thing here. So let me just copy pieces, I suppose. Uh, there we go. So copy that and paste that. There we go. And then this is just g prime of x. All right, so now this is, well, how do we deal with this a bit? Well, we could do a few substitutions to make it look a bit nicer. So let k be equal to g of x plus h minus g of x. Now, now notice that as h goes to zero, k also has to go to zero. And the reason for that is because if I plug in zero into this kind of term right there, if I plug in zero, we're going to get g of x plus zero minus g of x. But then this is equal to g of x minus g of x, but that's just zero. So that means k is equal to zero. That means as h approaches zero, k goes to zero. So that means as a result, we get the limit as k goes to zero. Okay, the next thing I'm also going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of a trick. So now for this part right there, I'm going to let g of x plus h be equal to k, uh, g of x uh, plus k. Okay, so if I go ahead and do these substitutions, we get the following limit. We get the limit as k goes to zero of f, uh, so let me just make sure you know we, we you can kind of follow what we're doing. So I'm gonna replace this g of x plus h with this part right there. So we get the limit as k goes to zero because of what I just described right there of f of, so let's see, that's going to be g of x plus k minus f of g of x. And then we could divide all of this. So let me just go ahead and divide this all. We're going to divide this by k. And then we have a g prime of x up there. Okay, but now let's go and do a little bit of a comparison. Remember the definition of the derivative says that f prime of x by definition is equal to the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. This is the definition of the derivative. But if you kind of compare this term and this term, we notice that our x term, so this little x right there, so this term, well, we notice that in this case, x is equal to g of x. So if you kind of do a little bit of replacement, that means that this x right there, that's just going to be g of x. So as a result, we get, as we finally get, that this right there is f prime of g of x times g prime of x. But that's exactly what we wanted to prove. So we're done. So this means that we just move this around a little bit just to kind of make my point clear. That means that the derivative of f of g of x, we have just proven. So this is just equal to f prime of g of x times g prime of x. And this is exactly what we wanted to prove. So we're done. So this is a proof of the chain rule. So hopefully that made sense. And if it made sense, uh, if it didn't make sense, sorry, uh, rewind and pause the videos you need to. And if you still have questions, just leave something in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. 
Let's do a really quick example involving chain rule. The vast majority of the examples I'm going to be doing in this video will be in the next video. But let's just do a quick one just to make sure we kind of understand how the chain rule actually works. So suppose I tell you that uh, f of x is equal to the square root of x squared plus 1. So this is the function we had in the first part of the bit of the question. So some composition, actually we just use h of x. So some composition of functions is equal to this. Okay. So how, we take the derivative, how do we take the derivative of this? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this as x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. So that means h prime of x. Well, according to the chain rule, we differentiate the outside. So the outside would be the square root portion. We leave the inside alone, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of, square, of a square root, well, we can just use the power rule. And then we leave the inside alone. So we leave the x squared plus 1 alone. And then according to the power rule, we subtract 1 from the exponent. And then we multiply all this by the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of x squared plus 1 is just 2x. The 2 is cancel. And then we just get x times x squared plus 1 to the, one, to the minus 1 half. Or if you want to simplify this, we can rewrite this as the square root of x squared plus 1. And the top is just going to be at x. And we're done. So that is our derivative. So not too crazy. The chain rule is one of the most important theorems, or I shouldn't say theorems, but one of the most important differentiation formulas in calculus. Just because it's very powerful and lets us take the derivative of many, many things in general. So once again, if this proof made sense, uh, good. My video was helpful. If it didn't make sense, just leave something in the comments and I'll, I'll be happy to answer. And if this really helped you otherwise, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. So in the next video, I'll be essentially doing a bunch of examples and following the chain rule and a few other interesting questions. So I'll see you then. Have a great day.